The year of 2006 was pretty nice to fighting game fans. Tekken 5 received its Dark Resurrection update on the PSP, both Virtual Fighter 5 and the first Arcana Heart game released in arcades, then there was Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max, KOF's 11 and Maximum Impact 2, and the Accent Core update to Guilty Gear X2. It's a damn fine collection. But hidden away on the Game Boy Advanced was a midsummer's pair of pseudo-fighting games that offered their own spin on competitive combat. July's Battle Beatemon and September's Beatemon Fire Spirits were tie-in games for a Beatemon animated show and toy line that came about through a partnership between Japanese toy giant Takara and American toy giant Hasbro to bring the Beatemon franchise to the West. Now, I never watched the show, nor did I ever play with the toys, but the first of these two games was one of the first video games I ever owned. Constructing this script ended up being much harder than I anticipated, to the point where I began learning Guilty Gear Plus R just to have content that would fill the time in while I worked on this. In my previous videos on handheld fighters, I was going over franchises that your average fighting game fan would already know about to some extent. Street Fighter, Tekken, Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters, watch those videos. But here, we're dealing with a franchise that I don't expect many to know about as a name, let alone the game's mechanics or its history. I sure didn't, and I have an actual connection to it. So what is Beatemon? A cursory web search will not give you anything close to a satisfactory answer. The franchise's Wikipedia page is bare to the point of being worthless, and the fan wiki, while having good information on individual show episodes and characters, is also lacking an in-depth overview of the brand as a whole. Most of my info came from YouTube videos by the likes of Negative Legend. So here we go. B-Damon, derived from the Japanese word for marble B-Dama, began as a toy line for the Bomberman franchise through a partnership with Bomberman publisher Hudson and toy maker Takara. They're human-looking figures that shoot marbles from their stomachs. The toys themselves are customizable through a variety of extra parts that do things like improving shot accuracy and shot power. The Bomberman line of Beatemon toys even led to a video game for the NES before Beatemon itself gained enough popularity to break off and become a standalone franchise. The NES title is focused on using Beatemon in a puzzle-solving type of way, with a very bare-bones combat mode haplessly tacked on, as would also be the case for the brand's outing on the N64. Its Game Boy Color releases are turn-based RPGs that I really struggle to find any information on. As you can see, Beatemon didn't really know how it wanted to represent itself in the video game space around this time. It wasn't until the two Game Boy Advance titles in 2006 that Beatemon turned its focus to combat in a style comparable to fighting games. Though the actual easiest comparison to make is to Windjammers, with both players locked on separate sides of the screen. But unlike Windjammers' usage of points to determine a winner, Beatemon uses the health bars we're all familiar with. Movement mainly consists of moving left or right, though you can push your Beatemon forward to get a better aim. You can also tilt your beat-em-on to the sides by using the shoulder buttons. This lets you ricochet your shots off the walls, which can come in handy in certain situations. So we've covered left, right, forward, and the diagonals. But what about back? While useless in the first GBA game, September's Fire Spirits gives holding back an actual purpose, which basically amounts to blocking. While holding back in Fire Spirits, your Beatemon enters a defensive stance where it gets a green outline and takes less damage from attacks, with the moves making a different sound when they hit you. You leave this defensive stance by doing anything that isn't holding back. Shooting, tilting, moving, you get it. The game demands that you move by giving you a limited amount of ammo and having extra reserves of ammo appear in the corners. The rate at which ammo spawns is dependent on your loadout. If you're using parts that give you a lot of ammo at the start of the game, the refills aren't going to immediately spawn and will take longer to respawn. On the flip side, using parts with low starting ammo or low maximum ammo will make refills available at the start of the game in most cases. You can also shoot your opponent's ammo refills, 
with a single shot from your side destroying what could be four or five balls on their end. It's one of three ways the game makes you think about which parts you're choosing. Once you've chosen your beat em -on's base body, you're given the chance to customize 10 individual sections of it. But you're not always going to be able to use all 10 sections, as some parts don't allow for other sections to get equipped with anything, or they take up multiple sections themselves. This customization has multiple purposes, one of which we've already seen. There are 8 stats that are impacted by your body and part choice, including your max ammo capacity, your starting ammo amount, how powerful your shots are, and how quickly you can move across the board. Attached to your part selection are the special moves at your disposal. Certain parts come paired with special moves, though you are limited to 4 special moves in total. If you have more than 4 parts with different special moves, you're able to make your picks on the final customization screen. The limit of 4 specials is a function of this game being on the GBA. To do your special moves, you hit one of the directions on the D-pad along with the B button, as the A button is what you normally use to shoot. During matches, your ability to do special moves is tied to a meter in the bottom right corner of the screen below your health bar. A change made in Fire Spirits is that special moves now have both bar and ball requirements, meaning some attacks require multiple bars of meter and multiple balls of ammo. Fire Spirits also introduced super special attacks, done by firing off a strike shot when you've gained the maximum 3 bars of meter. Strike shots are this game's equivalent to charge supers, done by holding down the normal shot button and waiting until the hexagon around your ammo amount turns red while it spins. The charging mechanic used to have a different purpose in the original game, where strike shots didn't exist and therefore neither did super specials. In the original, charge shots would travel across the screen faster, have less variation in their aim, and do increased damage. That is no longer the case in Fire Spirits, as once you fire your strike shot, you can't charge any more shots. Strike shots can also be used outside of super specials, as a high-powered shot that does similar damage to one of your normal specials while not requiring any meter. But you only get to use your strike shot once per round. Unlike the previous games I've covered, both beat em -on games have legitimate story modes, telling the whole of the TV series across them. Neither should take you more than about 5 hours to beat, but they're both fun to play through, especially if the player is of a younger age. The games even offer mid-cutscene choices, like whether or not to let your traveling partner fall off a cliff. This happens within 30 minutes of the first game, and it really caught me off guard while replaying it. In the same vein of catching me off guard, but not for a good reason, Fire Spirits has a gay, panic-perverted adult character that has the hots for your 13-year-old protagonist. On a brighter note, the game also comes packed with a variety of mini-games that add to the experience and can be played against another person via the GBA link cable. That's an area even modern fighting games haven't tapped into yet. I said this in my first video, and I won't belabor it here, but just consider this. Tekken Ball? With online multiplayer. Guilty Gear, with a smash-like Break the Targets mode, that has online multiplayer. I've always loved modes like this, and I think they do a great job in passively teaching the basics of how certain mechanics work. This is the first video where I've looked at titles that aren't spin-off versions of mainstay console brands. That's a shame, because these games feel like they would do great with enhanced versions built for heftier hardware. Just like Windjammers currently is, I have no doubt that a proper beat em on console version would be a common side game at tournaments. It's got a good mix of simple controls and mechanics that higher level competitors can refine to separate themselves from the rest of the player base. Another thing that would work to its advantage, as opposed to say, Mortal Kombat, is that its handheld outings are legitimately great games that can sell you on the series. The question now becomes, how would a console slash PC release of Beatemon actually work? The main thing I'm getting at has to do with customization, the game's biggest appeal. If you go to a tournament, you don't want to have to run through the entire list of parts and customize your Beatemon game after game. The solution to this could be a password system, with every possible combination of parts and special moves 
getting their own code that you have to punch in on the character select screen, one that otherwise has stock beat-em-on builds available to be picked. Having a variety of pre-made models would let new players hop into games without having to unlock anything, something not possible in the GBA games. The codes could also be used to bypass needing to play through the game and buying all the parts yourself. This gives tournament organizers the choice of whether or not to allow custom builds, since the option to run stock is always available. The game's UI and camera angle would also need a significant overhaul, but that's not something I feel like exploring today. That'll do it for this video. Did any of you play these games as a kid, or know of the series in general? Be sure to leave a comment if that's the case, I'd love to learn that I'm not the only person who played this game growing up. With my first batch of GBA fighters taken care of, I'll be moving on to a group of odd fighters I found while collecting ideas for this series initially. Anyways, peace.